A spread trade is also called a vertical spread, and it's a position in two or more options of the same type. So that would be two or more calls, or alternatively, two or more puts. Here I have a bull spread with two calls, but I'll also show you the bull spread that we can generate using two puts. <laughs> I'm going to show you four trades that illustrate John Hole's option spread trades. These are also called vertical spreads, but there's only two vertical spreads here really. In the top row, it's a bull spread, and that is a directional bet, hoping that the future stock price goes up. And the other vertical spread here is the bear spread, also directional bet, hoping that the future stock price goes down. The reason there's two is interesting. It's that we can use either calls or puts for either of them. So in the case of a bull spread, it's probably more intuitive to think, okay, I'll use calls for the bull spread because I'm bullish, but it can also be created with a pair of puts. And in the case of the bear spread, it might be more intuitive to think, okay, I'm bearish, I'll use puts, but it can also be created with calls. And there's an interesting difference between the two. They're not the same. But I start with the most popular, probably, is a bull spread with calls. And first, plotting a long call here with a profit diagram. Remember, we said this is a profit diagram, not a payoff diagram. And we want to be mindful of that key definition here, at least for diagram purposes, that profit equals payoff minus cost. So what I wanted to say about these plots here is after you look at a few, you can immediately infer two features from the plot. The first, the strike price, because this plot will inflect here sharply at the, st at the strike price after all. This is when there starts to be positive intrinsic value. That x-axis is the scenario of future, stock, uh, future stock prices. So this long call has in increasing intrinsic value starting here at the point of inflection or $18, that must be the strike price. So my strike price here that I just arbitrary, arbitrarily selected is $18. The second thing you can immediately infer here is the flat segment is going to be the value the price or premium or cost of that call. Sometimes easy to forget that. You can't see exactly where it is because it depends on the pricing model, the Black-Scholes-Merton that I've used underlying this, and you can, get the, you can download the spreadsheet, which is mostly a function of the volatility that I happen to select. But my price here happens to be $3.51. But that flat segment is the premium or cost of this long call. So those two features we can immediately infer. Strike price at point of inflection, flat segment represents that cost of this long call. And so here where we have future stock prices lower than 18, what happens to this long call that we purchased? It's going to be underwater, zero intrinsic value, expires worthlessly, there will be zero payoff but it will have cost us $3.51 such that the profit is negative 351 or net loss. And that's why we can see here that this long call profit diagram here is in negative territory to represent its initial cost. Okay, so that's the first position in the bull spread. According to Hull, the definition of these vertical spreads is that it's a pair or it's two or more of the same type. So that means if we have a call, we know the other position is going to be a call as well. So now I add the other call and it's a short call. So in the bull spread with calls, here's the defining feature. The short call, that's the call we're selling or we say writing the call, its strike price needs to be greater for it to be a bull spread. And so I also have a profit diagram for the short call here represented in dash red. I tried to use red for the calls that we're writing and blue for the calls that we're purchasing. And remember what I said about the feature, the two things we can infer immediately from the profit, profit diagram. The first is that strike price at point of inflection, which is, you can see, $22. Again, I arbitrarily selected the strike price here, but no, again, in order to make it a bull spread, I need it to be greater than the strike on my long call. So it's $4 greater. And then also what I have here is this flat segment, which must represent the premium 
of this call that I'm writing. You can't see it, but it's at a dollar fifty three here. And then notice, unlike the long call that we purchased, this flat segment is in positive territory because it's a short, right? We have written or sold this call. So we say this is premium that we've collected or we pocket the premium immediately. It's positive. And you'll see on the next slide, this premium that we pocket is going to partially fund the call that we're purchasing. Okay, so those are the two positions for my bull spread with calls. And they combine into my portfolio plot, which as before, the portfolio is going to be represented a solid line. It's the combination of the positions. In this case, it's only the two. And I, I'm using solid purple because red plus blue is roughly purple. And so here we have the profit diagram for a bull spread with call. You'll notice it's capped on the downside and capped on the upside, but it's bullish. It wants to see a future stock price that's greater on the, on the upside. Notice here on the left, at future stock strike stock price less than $18, we have here the flat segment and this visually represents the initial cost of the bull spread. After all, right, we have here in blue the cost of the long call that we purchased, in this case happens to be 351, but partially funded by the short call or the call that we wrote happens to be 153. And you can see visually the net cost to us here is the purple line in the middle. And it happens to be a net cost of 198 or just about $2. But it's a negative territory representing the initial net cost. Now, if the future stock price finishes below this lower strike price, we have two calls. What happens? Neither of them is exercised. They both expire worthlessly. And so this negative, this initial cost will also represent our profit and it'll be a net loss. On the other hand, we're bullish with this bull spread. So what we're hoping for is a future stock price greater than $22, in which case the payoff will be K2 minus K1. That's if we're greater than future stock price greater than uh, greater than K2. The payoff will be K2 minus K1. That's going to be 22 minus 18 is $4. But that's the payoff. We have to subtract the initial cost, $1.98 or about $2. We'll get our net profit. It's $2.02 02 or about $2. You can see that's the net profit on the bull spread with calls. And so it's bullish but capped on the upside. So that's the bull spread with calls. And then we can also do a bull spread with puts. Rather than build the diagram up, I'm just going to show you all three trades at once. And here we have a long put, and you can see inflecting at $18 with strike price of 18. And it's funded by a short put or a put that we write with a higher strike price. So the bull spread with put, the defining feature of that is that the put that we write, the short put has a higher strike price than the long put. And now I would draw your attention to here to what I think is the most interesting feature of it. Notice this, this dashed blue line here is the cost of the long put, with that the put that we're purchasing with strike of 18, and it happens to be about 80 cents. The dashed, dashed red line is the premium that we're going to pocket. After all, we're writing a put with a higher strike price, so it needs to be more valuable. In this case, its value is 266. That's premium we're, we're pocketing. The premium that we pocket more than funds, more than offsets, quite a bit, the cost of the per put that we're purchasing. So unlike the bull spread with calls, the bull spread with puts you can see here does not have an initial cost. It has an, it's a, represents an initial cash inflow to us 
right when we create the bull spread. So nice, interesting feature about that bull spread. And so if the future stock price finishes above the $22, neither of these puts is exercised and the profit is equal to that initial cash inflow that we received with the bull spread. On the other hand, it being bullish, we don't we don't want to we don't want the outcome where the future stock price is below 18 because in that case the payoff is going to be uh, K1 minus K2 or 18 minus 22, so negative $4 payoff. You start to see we're in a negative area where both of the uh, puts are being exercised, but we did uh, collect, in this case, the 186 premium, and so we're left with a net profit or net loss here of about negative 214. So that's the bull spread with puts. And then now I can go to the bear spread. And if so, if we're doing a bear spread, we're bearish, it might be more intuitive to think of the bear to use puts for expressing the view that's bearish. We could start with a long put. I've selected a strike price of 22. We can see the uh, sharp inflection here at strike of 22. And visually, we can see here that this premium, the premium on this long put to purchase the cost must be uh, almost $3. It happens to be exactly 266. And then I um, combine the long put with a short put here. And the defining feature here is that the put that we purchase has a higher strike price than the per put that we write. And so here's our short put uh, inflecting at 18, so strike of 18, and then it has a initial cost here. It looks like, um, to our counterparty, uh, it looks like about a dollar, and that happens to be about 80 cents. And so we can see here visually, we're going to be purchasing here an option that costs 266, but it's going to be partially funded by a short put with a lower strike price that must be less valuable. So that's going to be cash inflow to us that partially offsets. And so you can visually already, before I show you, you can see that uh, net cost of this bear spread with puts is going to be somewhere right in this negative area. And so if I do that, if I go to the next slide, I get the portfolio for the bear spread. And here is my initial net cost of the bear spread. It happens to be about $1.86. So it will cost me to write this bear spread. And if the future stock price ends up above this higher strike price of 22, neither of these puts will get exercised. And this will also represent our net profit or net loss. On the other hand, we're hoping that the future stock price is lower. This view is bearish, in which case the payoff will be K2 minus K1 or 22 minus 18 is a $4 payoff. However, we subtract the initial net cost to get the final, uh, the net profit on this, which is a, uh, $2.14 right here is the net profit on the bear spread with puts. And so finally, we can also do a bear spread with calls. And so here the idea is that the long call that we purchase has a higher strike price than the short call that we write or sell. Right, and in this case, you can see the portfolio of bear spread with calls. Here we have the short call that we wrote with a lower strike price must be more valuable. So the cost of the long call is more than offset by the short call, and this bear spread with call represents when we generate it immediately a cash inflow or net premium that we pocket happens to be here about $1.98. And 
if in fact the stock price ends up finishes below eighteen dollars, neither the call is exercised, and the net premium that we pocketed represents the profit to us in the bear spread. So that's in the, the appealing advantage of the bear spread with calls over bear spread with puts. We have net premium instead of net cost initially, and then on the other hand, if the stock price ends up above twenty-two then the payoff's gonna be K1 minus K2 equals 18 minus 22 equals negative four for a payoff. However, we did receive a net premium initially of 198 so that our net profit here is a net loss of negative 202 on the bear spread with calls. And so, that represents the two vertical spread trades, right? A bull spread here, top row, you can see visually both are bullish. Bear spread, bottom row, again, similar shape on the purple, both expressing a bearish view. But I did highlight the key difference here. And that is if we look at the bear spread with calls to, to generate this bull, bull, I'm sorry, bull spread with calls to generate it, there's an initial cost that's right here. But if we do a bull spread with puts, there's an initial cash inflow or premium that we pocket. In the case of the bear spread, if we use puts, we can see here, oh, right here, there's an initial cost. On the other hand, if we use bear spread with calls here, it's an initial cash inflow or premium that we pocket. So those are vertical spreads. If this video was helpful, then please subscribe to the channel and make sure you'll get our updates. We do about two new videos a week. Thank you.